we gathered here to discuss this, uh, like the some of the things that uh, we've been uh, thinking about and the way that we met together, like some time ago. Uh, I got the idea to, to make an interview with you because I think there is a lot of valuable things that uh, we can share together here and uh, maybe inspire other people as well to create uh, a better experience and uh, inspire in general for creativity and inner reflections and stuff like that. So let's keep it, uh, let's try to keep it uh, also a reminder to myself <laughs> to make it uh, spontaneous. It's always, you know, when the cameras are on, it always like when somebody's watching you or paying attention to you, you always seem to, you know, like uh, as a human being, get nervous and like, oh, I'm going to say the right thing or I'm going to say the wrong thing. Yeah, people always going to judge everything. But, uh, okay, let's... Uh, do you have something to say in the beginning? Well, no, I believe we should just just start and, and see where, where it lands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so so basically, um, when we met uh, last year, more or less in, a, in the same time, like this year as well, in, uh, we met uh, in the company uh, event that uh, been organized by my company and you've uh, been invited as a main uh, speaker. Uh, I remember that it was really, really inspiring the speech you had and especially some of the parts that I would like to touch in, in this interview as well. Uh, some of the depths of the insights that you had and also uh, other things that you shared uh, from more, let's say, product design experience point of view that uh, me as a designer got really interested in it. And uh, there was a, a need for me to, uh, to discuss this thing because I didn't see them currently in the world, like uh, materialized in the world. Uh, there is not much done for uh, a user experience po point of view for like uh, for the people who have different needs and different uh, disabilities and abilities and different things that you know to tailor the the user experience in a way that that we can reach out to, to more people and make their life easier in a way and uh, would you like to say something about that well you know there's kind of uh, a couple of different areas you're touching there you're of course touching the, my my speech that i did for your company uh where it contained like bits of my life um uh, my visually impairment uh how i cope with it from the from the start as a teenager um my depression how i got out of, out of it um and how I later, as a blind person, found uh, like uh, that society and that life can be a bit challenging if you don't have your vision anymore in this life. Because, you know, everything around us, everything that we do, that we talk about, that we experience is based on a person that is healthy in a way i mean healthy having all of your functions at a hundred percent and i also found out later in life like not many persons actually can meet up with these requirements <laughs> you know as all as older you get uh, the more you will have disabilities in why way, one way or another, you know, uh, many, many, many people uh, get to have problems with their eyesight later on in life. I mean, when you are 20, 30, 40, you can read your newspaper, no problem like this on your uh, breakfast table. And as older you get, as closer the newspaper gets to your face, and when you're 80, you have it like hair. 
and when you're night, you cannot see it anymore. <laughs> you know, and this goes faster or slower <laughs> depending on the person. And this happens to almost everyone. You know, you also have problems like as older you get, you have problems walking, you have problems doing everyday stuff like just carrying your shopping bags from the car to your home or getting out of a couch or you know everyday life gets affected for us and for some of us it gets early on some of uh, some of us uh, like get is, is born with a disability for example blindness or uh, cerebral paralysis or other forms of uh, uh, like we call it disability uh, and what I am trying to do with my life now uh, with my speeches is to actually showcase and show the ability in the disability because many of us who has disabilities we are able to do so much we are able to uh, contribute in a way that society doesn't see today you know uh, we have so much knowledge we have so much information to to give society that you actually don't even know that you need it's interesting because the first person i heard talking about giving something to people that they don't even know they need was steve jobs you know <laughs> he's like I'm going to put out a product that people don't actually need, know that they need, but then when, it, when it's out, they will not be able to live without it. And now we have the iPhone, <laughs> okay? We have like the internet, we have our emails, we have our banking, we have everything in this gadget. We didn't even know what it was about, why we needed it, and now we cannot live without it. And it's the same when we're talking about, for example, accessibility uh, and other forms of knowledge that people with disabilities has. You know, uh, as a person with disability, you're the perfect, and I mean it, the perfect problem solver in society. Why is that? Why do you think, you know? Because we're used to every day find different solutions to everyday problems that we solve, that we, that we incur, uh, incur uh, that happens. Every day we're used to finding different solutions to how am I going to do my banking? How am I going to do my shopping? How am I going to do my, uh, to find a way to, to find the right colors of my clothes, to find a way to uh, email, to find a way to, to do every, you know, life thing that you do, I have to also do, but I have to do it in a different way. How do I cook? <laughs> you know? How do you know which spices to use? How do you know what what products you're using? How you know I have to find solutions for all of these problems all the time. So I used to say to big companies like, okay, trust me, if you have a problem and you need a solution that you cannot find right now, contact a disabled person because we know we will find a solution for you eventually. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because uh, you are do looking at it from a different angle. You're not uh, taking it for granted, the things that are set, uh, like, because we take uh, things for granted and because we don't think about things that we already have, like the abilities that we have, we take them as they're something like we don't think about them. We just have them and it's like we don't never think about them until we reach the point of not having them. <laughs> Mm. no no worries and and it's kind of uh, really interesting that until you are in this condition that uh, until your condition changes you never think about things and it's uh, it's really like people think that they have imagination they can think about different things and stuff but until they are 
at the point uh, in the future point where they are they they can never know which point would that be because in that point maybe they will lose an arm uh, sight or whatever else or something happens in their surrounding they can never predict things that how they will be behave uh, in that moment because they're not in that moment right now in the, they're in the moment and they're dealing with their surrounding at this moment so it was interesting for me uh, especially from the user experience point of view that after the talk you 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 made uh, i remember that it, uh, i told you the the other day when we were uh, the other night we were uh, taking a dinner and i remember that uh, i told you that you were there uh, sitting with uh, like a with few few guys uh, and those guys were all developers there and you were talking with them and i was like wait a second why nobody because there were a lot of other designers there i mean in the conference but nobody reached out to you to to ask you questions you know and i was like and i ran there and i was like what's happening here you know like i want to talk to you you know and and they were talking to you just like two three developers and i was like why developers are talking why are you talking to developers it was i think actually you who initiated the conversation maybe even because because it was like and then i, I started to think about it and 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 i was like yeah but who cares about visual thing i mean <laughs> for for you you know it doesn't matter if this color is red or brown or a little bit purplish or you know you don't care about that you care like it, is this something that you can touch you can feel is this something that you can you know that can help you uh, to understand better the surrounding in which you are and uh, is this design helping you or is this design just standing <laughs> there to to you know occupy somebody else you know who who can see it you know and until and i was like kind of it was a big learning curve for me and then you took your phone i remember and and we were, we were talking about different things and, and then like uh, we talked about it and i was like yeah add me on on the social media and and you opened the the phone and yeah i'm gonna add you right now and and then you started it was really fast <laughs> and i was not seeing anything and it was a dark screen and i was like yeah man but uh, i don't see anything <laughs> and then <laughs> only then i realized like wow oh my god yeah why would you need i mean where was i you know i was like wow and and then i understood how just to get a flashback of how many products they're not structured in a way that it's easy for you to access uh, the, the 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 goods and services there and 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 even to read stuff which is there or or anything to have any experience of these products and and these uh, concepts there you know so i think there is a lot to 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 do on that uh, on that side but you know um people have their own lives their own work their own everyday challenges uh and i believe that people today lives lives in a fast track towards the future you know they they never stop they never reflect they never uh actually you know think about uh, like okay this is my box here and these are my tracks and my box is following these tracks at like 250 kilometers an hour and it just goes forward uh, on this side the windows are black they, they cannot they don't see anything <laughs> on the side you know like yes. I don't know if you've seen a horse like that has exactly. this kind of yeah they just see forward and they just go and sometimes in some of these people's worlds there is a bump on the tracks you know there is a stone sometimes this stone is a mountain and this train will eventually drive right into this mountain and it will completely stop you know yeah all the sound all the life everything will just stop just like it did for me when I uh, learned that I am going to be visually impaired. Eventually, I will become blind, you know. My world just stopped. It went just upside down. Uh, and not until then, I started to listen. 
actually, what does this voice in here, in your head, say? What is there around you? What is there on your right, on your left, behind you? You know, not just over there, not just straight forward. And when people stop and reflect and, you know, actually break this train and see, okay, what everyone is doing. Is there, <laughs> is there anything that I can do to make a difference? What can I do as a person? And some person, some people, they have done this. Because look at the, all of these great uh, scientists, all of these great people, uh, no one of them has reported ever that they have found something really great, done, done a great project or, or uh, developed something extraordinary while they were thinking about the, the future or while they were busy thinking about their past. But it was on the moment that they actually stopped their brain like took a pause then they found out all of these like okay the apple does never fall far from the tree you know Einstein yeah. <laughs> and all of these people they found it on the on the moment every one of them all of these great products all of these great uh, science uh, we, we have made you know huge leaps uh, they, they are from the moment they are not by people thinking about you know being busy thinking about the future and this is what i mean like society is fast tracking towards the future and they forget who they are working for they forget that people are getting older and older you know the demographics is is uh, is a huge challenge today uh they are forgetting like that our society as it is today will not work for the people that will live in it in 50 years. You can look at climate changes, you know, there are people denying it anyway. Uh, you can look at, uh, at, at everyday things we do, like taking the bus, the train, Will it actually be uh, comforting for us, for, for people in 50 years? We, we are building a society built on a, um, on a, a base for, for, for a very uh, healthy, well-trained man on about his 30s. <laughs> and he's really rich and he's really uh, movable and comfortable and... And, you know, this is what yeah. we are building our society, uh, our uh, everything in our society towards. But, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people, but I don't know as many who, who can actually meet up with those standards. You know, a tall guy, handsome guy, rich guy, uh, executive job, everything not many can acquire to those kind of standards. So what we need to do and what we need to understand is to stop that train and think like we need to build a society, we need to build uh, a world that is individual. That is for every individual to be able to use it. We need to build a world that no matter if you're blind, if you have one leg, if you have no legs, if you're a girl, if you're a boy, if you're old, if you're young, you will be able to use this, uh, this, the, the, this world in the same manner as everyone else. And today we don't have that society. And the, the one, the, those people who will stop and think about that and really give it a thought and really give it an, an effort to develop products, to develop uh, communications, to develop information, 
uh, in a way that, that is available for everyone, they will be the winners. They will be the next generations of winners. And the others, well, they will keep on losing. <laughs> because it's yeah. a dead track to losing to that mountain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's exactly like, uh, I mean, what is happening. It's kind of, uh, it's also like funny. Uh, w- w- when you mentioned that... Uh, when you were in a taxi and, and going uh, and then the taxi driver ask you, uh, you know, like, oh, if I did lose my vision, what would I, I would kill myself, you know, like, for example, like, like, like me, you know, like somebody, because I do a lot of art, a lot of different things that are, they're all mostly visual things. And somebody said like, oh, but what if you, you know, like lose your vision one time, you know, and what will happen to you and things and, and, it's like if you're only dependent on that in your life and if you're only focusing that you always have what you have right now you don't see like uh, really you don't treasure what you already have and you also gonna i mean you're not able to see really the future you're not able to to because I, for example for me i mean i do the visual things but i also like to write poetry to write to think about things and that was also one of the the reasons why I wanted to, to have the in- interview, one of the reasons. But take, take art and culture as a perfect example, you know. I'm, you could say that I'm, I'm you know, I'm legally blind today. Uh, you, you, I, I can just see some lights and, and some shapes in a small manner of way. Um, but take art and culture for as an example. I also love art and I love listening to a person that has made a painting or a tattoo and tell me in a passionate way about that tattoo you know it says so much when someone tells me about something you know i I see people having uh, i understand okay they have a tattoo it means this this to them and it's it's and they, they describe the shape and they describe the colors and they describe everything you know i see it in a sense, without seeing it with my eyes. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like reading a book you imagine for yourself. For me, you know, for me, it's really, really valuable. Uh, and of course, I know many visually impaired and blind people who has great tattoos. We also love tattoos. I don't have any myself. Someday, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, I know many people who have it, have them and they trust in the artist to to do a great job and to describe for them and you know there is also people you know people with disabilities what we need to understand is that people with disabilities reflects the society in total we also want to have the newest gadgets we also want to have cool tattoos we also want to have trendy and new and great clothes bags yeah i mean watches whatever okay we we also want all of that and many of us we can afford that so what you what what we need to do as society is like acknowledge that this this group of people exist and they can be a huge a force and someone to reckon with in, in society and we need to build a society that also involves people with disabilities from start to end that is, you know culture for example i love musicals okay i got to I, I didn't do that from the beginning but as older i get as many uh, musicals i like to I, I love to go to i've been in london just for going to great musicals and you know i want to be able to to consume that in a way that 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 gives me the full uh, experience of a great musical you know no one needs to interpret uh, or or tell me what they are saying in the song because that i can listen but what i need for example in a musical is um the audio description of what's visually happening on the scene do you understand yeah clear yeah clear. Uh, and that is possible today and theaters 
have understood this. Okay, there is there are people with visual impairment who wants to come to our musicals, so we have to provide this service. And then I sit there and I get to know everything that's happened on the scene and I get to enjoy the great music live in a theater and I get to be part of society just like everyone else. You know, that's fulfillment for me. And, you know, when, when there is something you love, something you want to do, do you always look at the price tag? <laughs> do you? Yeah, you don't. No, you don't. You look you, at the thing. You will find the way to get that money and to do that thing. Okay? You will find it. You will do it because it's your dream. It's it's what you want to do. It's what you value. So that is that is the thing, you know. That's why we should work on on, on building a society, building a a a service for everyone. So what I would like to uh, ask you to talk about now is. Uh, it's really this uh, this depth that uh, that struck me uh, while you were talking because it was something that I find it really uh, different from from most people uh, that they encounter, uh, and that's like this uh, inner sense, like this inner uh, beingness which you felt in one moment, in one difficult moment in in your life, and and that would make me really like. Honestly, like I, I cried in that moment because I was like, wow. And you were going to explain now, but I was like, that moment is exactly what we all have. That that moment, that voice in us, that that is the equality with everybody. That voice is the guide to, to living. It guides you to never give up, to always go on and beyond and beyond because it's only one life. It's only one chance. It's only this inner, inner being. What can you tell about it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, which moment I, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you know, I believe, I'm a strong believer that everyone is born with a kind of inner strength, with a kind of uh, inner self, inner power that will always strive like for, for to, to live, to develop and to be good and to be something and someone and I believe that in a way there are kind of uh, you know a lot of different ways to find your inner self to find your your inner strength uh, and for me like I've tapped into it in in uh, all sorts of different ways in life and and times um, I got visually impaired when I was 13 years old uh, you know it, it completely turned my life around it completely uh, you know took away my, my goals my dreams my beliefs my um, my identity as a person all of a sudden you know you're 13 years old you're already struggling with you know teenage usual teenage thoughts like well, who I am I what I'm going to do and you know you, 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 I, I was actually quite uh, mindset about becoming a professional football player so so that was what I lived for that was what I did and what I what I really you know connected to and I I didn't see any other way of life but when destiny chose to to give me glaucoma and to take away my my you know one of my uh, my most important uh, senses um, then everything changed and the first years you know I didn't really know who I was I got disconnected from my family more and more uh, they saw it in a way I saw it in another way uh, I didn't have a, actually anyone to talk with 
anyone to discuss my my deepest thoughts, my deepest you know darkest thoughts with, and uh, slowly uh, I fell into a deep depression. You know, I felt like life is not worth living anymore. It got to a point where I, in a journey uh, back home to Kosovo in Mon in uh, uh, um, not Montenegro, uh, in Mac Macedonia, mm -hmm. I um, was standing at a steep uh, hill, and underneath it was a river flowing uh, in the middle of the night, and I, you know, I really saw my chance of you know just ending my struggle and ending my pain that was inside that was eating me alive you know inside inside out and you know today when i hear about people hurting themselves like physically they are cutting their arms or cutting their legs or something i kind of understand why they do that because a physical pain is handle you can handle it mm -hmm. in, a, in a different way but a deep deep sorrow and deep pain within that every day eats your eats away your, your identity and, and yourself that's a completely different story to handle so all of a sudden you know when I was standing uh, there at, at this uh, spot at that moment everything just disappeared like I, I was not afraid anymore. I was not sad anymore. I was nothing. I was just like completely, completely empty. And I was ready. You know, many people say they are afraid of death. They are afraid of, you know, dying. I just saw the wonderful feeling of getting relief from everything so just about when i was to take that step you know something happened a voice within me or, or outside or i don't know it's it's so difficult to explain this feeling but something said that no you cannot do that this is not the way this is not how it's supposed to be and from feeling, you know, really, really sad, in awful pain, to feeling absolutely nothing, and going to, you know, lying down on that spot, on that wet grass, and crying my heart out, and feeling sadder that, I, I, you know, that I've never felt before, it went like, those changes went in, in a blink of an eye, almost. It was a out-of-body experience that is so, so, so difficult to explain to people who has not been there. I believe, you know, that I was in the complete bottom of life. I didn't, I didn't feel, feel like I had anything to lose anything to win, anything at all. And a little warrior, something, somewhere deep inside decided that, okay, we restart now. Now we build from here. Now we have reached the bottom where we can start to build a foundation of who you are. And I promised myself, you know, then in that moment that I will never, because I didn't take that step, something prevented me from taking that step. It's not meant to be. So from that moment and on, I will never, ever try to hurt myself again. You know, and I've lived with those thoughts about, uh, uh, you know, taking my own life for many years until then. 
But in that moment, I decided, like, okay, it cannot get worse than this. This is the worst it can get. So now, from today, I have just to build on slowly and, you know, just take a day at a time and be happy for my life instead. On the same journey, actually, I believe that all of that journey was meant to be because it was just after the war uh, in Kosovo and so many people, you know, had been through so much. So many people had suffered so much, you know, from both sides, from everyone, you know. Wars are tragic. They are... They don't care about, you know, what nationality you have, what God you believe in. You know, a bullet is a bullet. A knife is a knife. Fire is fire. It doesn't ask you who you are. It just takes your life and, and then it's over. And uh, uh, we, we went by bus to Kosovo and uh, it was me and my mom and uh, lots of other people. And during the whole journey, uh, my mom talked to a woman uh, that was really looking forward to meeting her only son uh, for after 10 years. She has not uh, met him for, for 10 years and the war was just over like couple of months ago or something and she was talking about this son the whole journey and you know when we came to Kosovo and on the border they were telling us like okay be careful just keep on to the big roads don't venture out in the nature because there are lots of mines and lots of you know things so be careful and the military everywhere and burned houses everywhere it's really smelled burned everywhere uh, you know, you, you see Albanian villages completely destroyed, and then you see Serbian villages completely destroyed. Everyone was just, like devastating, and we stopped at the first bus stop, and where this lady was was going out, and it, I think it went like it took like one minute or two, and then I hear this scream from her. That will haunt me all my life, you know. This, this pain that I had just the night before at this steep hill. I felt it from her. It somehow passed from me to her. Somebody told her that her son is not meet, meeting him up because he's dead. He was killed during the war. And no one had the stomach to tell her. You know, I was sitting on this bus. And for the first time, I felt ashamed of myself. You know, I felt this huge shame. Here I was sitting, living in Sweden, one of the world's most developed countries. One of the world's best countries ever, with some of the world's best opportunities for everyone. And I was complaining, and I was like, I was a step away from taking my life because I was going to become blind. And this lady just, you know, understood that her son is dead. And my mom was sitting beside me, and she could have lost her son just like yes. 10, 12 hours ago. It was an awful feeling, you know. It was a feeling that really killed me inside mm. again. Um, and during this this journey, I met people. I met a, a, a old guy. He was like eighty five or something. He lived together with a four year old kid, uh, and it was only them two, only only those two people who had survived the war from a huge family. And, you know, this guy, his eyes, you know, even though I could not see them, I knew they were tindering. I knew that he lived for this little guy and he saw the future and he saw like, okay, I lived, I live and this guy lives, so we will make the best we can from now, okay? 
And that was also a kind of uh, awakening for me, you know, like, my God, look at these people. I met women that have been, you know, raped and treated in a way like, you know, it's not human. And they didn't think about taking their own life. They thought about, yeah, they're happy to be living. Of course, they have their story, they have their bags, but still, you know, they were looking towards the future and thinking like, okay, what can we do now? Yeah. So that that made a, made a huge difference in my own, you know, inner being. And I promised myself like, okay, from today, I will listen. And I will connect to my own inner self. And, you know, at least once a day, stop and being thankful for what I have. I believe that, you know, being able to connect to your own inner strength has a lot to do with being thankful. Being thankful of, of the moment. Okay, my, my vision is gone. My eyes are bad. But I have two ears. I have a mouth. I can communicate. I can walk. I can do so much things, you know, that I that I have to be thankful of. Uh, I have family, I have friends. I live in a country that will provide for me. There is so much to be thankful for every day. Uh, and I believe that everyone in the world, and you know, you, I, I see I've, I've had the honors of traveling around the world for so many years. And, you know, as poor, as poorer as a country is, you know, I believe that people are more happy because they are so thankful of what little they have. And, you know, we in the Western countries, we have thousands upon thousands of things that actually owns us, that actually decides who we are instead of like, us yeah. stopping and being, you know, thankful about the actual life and what what we have, but we we always tend to want that we don't have and keep on wishing, keep on uh, striving, and never happy for what we actually have right now. And I believe that that is a key to both our inner self and our a real happiness because what is happiness you know yeah it's a huge question what is happiness yeah. and what is joy yeah it's it's really good that, that you mentioned this uh, as well and especially uh, about the the details about how this war affected and, and people around it and because at that point like it sounds to me like you started building your own self from that day you started uh realizing surrounding and realizing the unity of everybody and kind of that, that the pain is pain you know like everybody feels the pain and everybody feels like the depression as as much as they can feel it and it's kind of for me it was always kind of worried me when when people go into concepts and the, for example like oh respect my country oh respect my country you know like and they go all into making things out of you know and dividing themselves and uh you know like in a way that that we don't see anymore the humanity we don't see anymore uh the essence of being what really human means and being connected with everybody wanting this goodness you know like for me that was kind of like you said uh also the, the other day like uh, that everything is kind of uh, about me 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 oh what everything's happening to me my pain my sorrow my <laughs> and when you said uh, also like when people complain about things it's like uh, it's so true that 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 is like okay how much are you giving like how much you can contribute it's like yeah you can take everybody can take and that's fine <laughs> it's easy to take but it's like how much you can contribute you know i meet 
as a as a public speaker, as a, a life coach, or or whatever, I meet so many people that you know are complaining a bit, and they are they are wondering like, you know, I'm trying so much, but I, it seems like I never get something out of it. It seems like I'm stuck in the same area in the same spot. It seems like. I, you know, I try and try and try and try and never, you know, conceive anything. <laughs> and I believe, just as you said, like, we need to stop thinking about me and think about us more. Think yeah. about, like, I, I am a true believer, like, what you give in, you will get back. And I ask these people, like, okay, listen, stop. How much have you been giving this last week, this last month, this last half a year or a year? And I don't mean only money. I don't mean only, like, economical aspects of it. <laughs> of course, you can... Of course, you can like send uh, send a hundred kroner or, or a thousand kroner or one million to the Red Cross, and uh, it will clear your conscience for a while. Uh, but what is that actually? You know, start in your everyday life. How many people have you actually uh, smiled to today? How many people have you greeted today? Did you tell your colleague that has done a great job with something? Did you tell him or her, wow, fantastic work? You know, that can make a difference that you can benefit from, not only today, but imagine this person that, that is, is hearing that she, he or she has done a great job, will think about it in a week, and you will still benefit from that, you know? Yeah. If you smile at someone today and five days from now, this person will think about you like, wow, Mihailo smile at me. Wow, he, I think he likes me or something good, you know? You will benefit from that. And also, like giving can be sometimes misunderstood. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Because I don't think in giving, like, I'd give something to Mihailo and expect something back from Mihailo. Okay? If I give something to Mihailo, I give it from my heart. I don't expect anything back. You know, I believe that every one of us, we, are, we originate from the same source, from the same kind of uh, being, energy, or you could call it what you want God whatever uh, we, we originate from the same source so if I give to Mihailo maybe in 10 years another Adam or you say what whatever will get back to me in some way you know yeah because when you like give to another you're kind of giving it to yourself yeah, and it no exactly. matters what what happens because it's like exactly as you said, like energy and uh, and about is it, is it God or is it Mumbu Jumbo or whatever it is? It's always this essence which gives life, and in the end, it takes life and it creates life and it expands life. We are all like beings who, who are who are meant to express life in all ways that I mean we we can. And and out of it, it's kind of like uh, how to say that that this energy, uh, it's kind of we are all connected uh, in the moment of now, wirelessly connected without this technology. Like you radiate something, like your inner being ra radiates. You know, uh, your state of being inside radiates to the outside, and things come together effortlessly. When you don't think about it, when you don't, oh, I do this now because I'm going to get this then. And well, you then know, you're not giving up from the heart. I believe like, you know, I was talking about your inner self, your, your inner strength, your inner warrior or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, 
the thing that resonates deep within you. Uh, if you try, just do it as an experiment, okay? Decide that today I will give a smile just for the thing, just for doing it. Okay, today I will give something to someone else. I will uh, provide a contact for a job seeker or something, whatever. And you will just do it because you want to, you know, just feel, just stop. And after you've done this deed, just stop and feel how much better you will feel because yeah. it's not your body. It's not your mind, but it will come and resonate within this inner self of yourself because it feels like you have given something and you will get something back, you know? And the momentarily thing you will feel and you will, you will actually experience is a kind of relief, a kind of small inner happiness that, you know, you have given something to someone else yeah as if like the, the the someone else is actually you in another position your own self yeah. it's kind of you are giving to another exactly it's like exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah. It's, it's it's really interesting and you, there are so 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 many ways that when you actually know about this when you actually stop and understand and you know not being judgmental about these uh, things that, that you can feel this happiness uh, every day in your life. It's like, okay, just put away your phone and just listen to another person telling you a story. And when I mean listen, it's like really listen with your heart, not just with your, you know, yeah. looking at them and thinking about something else, but no, just stay stop and listen because this person's inner self will connect to yourself and feel that okay we are connected now something is happening someone is listening and you know yeah. just by doing that you have a connection because i feel in our society so many times that we lost this connection we lost you know we're so uh Oh, why, why you have to eat that? Uh, superficial. We are yeah. so superficial today, you know. Everything is about uh, appearance yeah. and and the outer selves of us, and so little about you know the inner selves of us, uh, and that what makes us so unhappy. That what yeah. makes us so divided and problematic and you know we see problems we see sorrow we see darkness everywhere now because we are striving for like having that perfect body having that perfect car having that and what is that perfect car like okay you've seen it on instagram and you've seen those muscles on instagram like flexing and oiled and everything and you're like looking at yourself in the middle like oh my god i can never become like that one yeah. you know and then you will get unhappy instead of like imagine if that person with those muscles actually wrote something on on instagram like hey today you know my life was not so good you know today my life was as usual as everyone else who's seeing this yeah. remember and just see what it will happen you know it will resonate mm. with all of those viewers of that picture you know yeah, all of a sudden exactly. they will not look at those those <laughs> shapes but they will look at that that message and think yeah. like wow yeah, and it will be like, oh, that message can contain that image as well. Yeah, <laughs> can exactly. be inside that image, exactly. <laughs> rather than it doesn't exist in that image. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't believe, uh, I don't believe. I, I think very, very few people actually in the world are evil. Yeah, you know, are yeah. Uh, they? They have this bad energy or whatever you could call it. I believe that many people are actually really good good nice people uh rich people often tend to be painted or tend to be presented like evil people but i met so many really rich people 
that are really, really, really nice, you know? But you have to give them some time and they have, you know, to find their inner self and like really connect in a, in a way that can that they can show you their, their you know, they are so used to this superficial mm-hmm. world. They are so used to never being able to relax and they are they are always attended by people who just love them and look them for their success, success mm-hmm. and appearance, you know? And when they meet people that genuinely I ask a person like a billionaire, hey, listen, I'm not interested about your business, okay, right now. I'm not interested about your cars. I'm not interested about your golf club. Tell me, tell me about your childhood. You know, yeah. I am interested in you. Yeah. Who are you? I was wondering about this ego now, a thing that, that uh, maybe we can touch upon. And it is uh, like how I see the, the ego is like an image that people create of themselves. And they create it because they think that that's safety, that's how they should, uh, you know, like uh, go with that image and it will be, life will be easier for them because you you know to have a, a consistent story rather than you know <laughs> living your life without the stories about yourself who you are like i'm a super artist or i'm a whatever you know like a poet or or i'm a bus driver or whatever i am you know uh without that they, they feel like who am i then you know am i then the same as everybody else or am i what what am i you know like and i think that's also like when you mentioned you mentioned the rich people and uh, because they're also living in their own surrounding without with everybody's you know uh, taking care of them and stuff like that and they get used to it and they're born into it and they would never understand how is it not to have that so as everybody else they all live with the, within their surrounding within their conditioning of their environment and and it's kind of uh, the 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 sense w- w- what you mentioned like when all these stories stop when you s- felt this liberation in in yourself in that moment when you started building yourself in that moment is like it's like um like everybody has this aliveness in them and and you see like for example you have a dog your your dog gibson right yeah gibson uh and uh, he's like a lot of times he's probably like just sitting and like now he's just sitting and resting and he's not sleeping he's uh, aware he's here you know he's present and he's kind of zoomed out you know like without any thoughts without any fears without any things and, and a lot of in animals we can learn a lot of these, these things we can see in them but in a society we're kind of always shoved like go this go that as you mentioned like we, we having like this horse uh one track mind you know like uh putting the 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 i mean horse doesn't have the track with one track mind but we when we put them in the track we put them in the blinders you know with those yeah, how do you call machines, them yeah. yeah and 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 so in the same way kind of uh this thing that in the society we're always running 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 in thousand directions without even knowing where we're going and, and it's like Today, you, you see, like, you post a video of, like, five minutes video, and people will be, oh, I don't have time to watch this. Okay, but but why? what do you have the time to do? <laughs> and what what is more important now that you're doing? Like, what are you doing right now? And it's kind of frustrating in a way, because you, you uh, every time that you just stop and just observe life as, as it is, as without judging it, without putting ideas into it, without creating stories around it you see that life happens of itself with this without the effort you know what is right thing to do you You know it's it's a really really interesting discussion discuss disgusting ego uh, because you can tackle it from so many many points of view Uh, and just like so much else in life Ego can be good, ego can be bad, ego can be neutral, <laughs> ego can be, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, but I believe that we in the Western countries, 
with the amount of information, with the amount of influences we are uh, we are reflecting upon every day that we we are uh, yeah we, we, we are um, seeing and being a part of every every day uh, I believe that our egos uh, tend to to break our egos tend to uh, float up in, in a way that makes us unhappy you know we have an image of ourselves we have an image of our lives and where we see our ego ourselves in this life that does not resonate with your reality and that's and, and it gets uh, you know it clashes with the reality yeah <laughs> and that makes us that makes us unhappy um, again to go to these like Instagram Facebook uh, uh, things and, and believe you know so many people believe so much in these pictures you know <laughs> and they are photoshopped a hundred times over <laughs> and they are written and rewritten like 12 times over just to be perfect you know I know people that choose a emoji just to be fitting yeah. and, and and like have 30 minutes for that yeah and just to make this beautiful picture of their life and other people look at this picture and think like wow you know, their yeah. ego also wants to experience that perfectness in life as this other person do. Yeah, and then yeah. also about the, the, this is like putting an image as if that image is who you really are. Because it's not like now, whenever like in the video you can stop the frames and you would have one image out of zillion images, you know, of, that we are creating in just this video. And yeah. none of the, these images can really be freezed in and represent who you really are because you are going beyond the image you're just having the, the body you're not that it even that you identify yourself everybody me you everybody kind of in the world we identify but when we know that it's illusion that that we can play with it but but it's not ultimately who we are really and 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 this uh, what you said about uh, um about giving and, and, and giving something each day to somebody. It's in this society, not here in this country, but in every country in the world, basically. I noticed that when you give something usually, because everything is like for some interest of some kind, you know. And when you give something, I'm just giving you. And, and they're, they're thinking like, okay, why is he giving me this for free? Is he an idiot? That's the first. Or... Or, oh, th instead of that, they tell another person, oh, look at this guy. This guy gave me this. For is he, he must be needed. Or, oh, I tricked him. I get this for less or free or whatever. And, and then it's like they're always looking at it. Uh, or or he do this now. Oh, is he gay? Or he is liking me or something. You know, everything is like out of some kind of coercion or something. Instead of looking at it, it's a nice thing to give you because I enrich my own life. Whatever you do with it. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter because I'm enriching. I'm giving in in a mirror of myself. I'm giving to another who is same as me, but in another position. If I can do that and enrich his life or her life, that will reflect to the overall mankind. And I think that's the the ego self telling you like, no, don't do this. Don't show your vulnerabilities. Don't. Uh, empathize actually with people don't do that like that because that's like weakness if you want to say something no you need to smile you need to be like this you need to that, that you know you need to show something that is in, in many areas i believe that you know the word ego or, or our ego is just another way of saying self-interest you know yeah i'm uh i i want something 
my ego wants something. My 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 belief is that I want to be like famous. I want to be known. I want to be recognized. I want to have uh, lots of money, and I want to have lots of respect. Um, but what the ego actually does, you know, is that the ego wants. The ego wants so much. And it wants it so much that it doesn't stop and reflect on what do I have to do to retain that, what I wish for, you know, what I'm longing for, okay? I just want it. And people with huge egos, they can walk over dead bodies <laughs> to reach that goal and yeah. I'm not saying that those people don't get anything because they do you know in this sometimes sick world you have people like Donald Trump you know yeah but whoever like, yeah or whoever they, they're all yeah, puppets yeah. they like, are nothing. yeah but still you know you have bad people and uh, working only for their own ego only for them themselves and they are getting stuff but you know deep inside they they don't have anything they don't even sleep during the night as normal people do because they, they deep inside the the res, the thing that resonates with everyone else the the thing that they are not in contact with uh, it wants something else it wants the, you know the real thing it wants the, the the fakey thing to disappear and for the good and for the, the you know it, it, the, this deep inside feeling this deep inside resonance can also be yeah. called conscience yeah, yeah you know and no matter who you are if you're Donald Trump if you're who, who, who whatever you yeah. know that conscience will eventually get to you. Yeah. You know? It yeah. will get to you. And then you get old and then you die and all of your millions and your billions and your hotels and your <laughs> uh, ships and your airplanes, they will stay here. Yeah. Okay. You will go. What have you done? You know? And what have you left behind you? I believe like, you know, you can do stuff today. You can give stuff. You can say stuff. You can uh, write books. You can you can uh, give something to other people that will be remembered and resonate back to yourself in two thousand years, in two hundred years. Like take Jesus as an example, Muhammad or. Yeah. whatever whoever what they have done some of the deeds some of them you know or or, or some other great uh, historian uh, historic figures they are known for something every one of them are known for something you know either they are known for good stuff and good things and that will resonate onto everyone else like okay some some uh, surnames and some uh, families and some some people they still benefit from that person yeah long time ago okay because he was a good person imagine having a surname called hitler today you know that legacy that he left i wouldn't uh, like to be called hitler yeah. <laughs> you know, no matter how much I give, no matter how good I am, no matter what I do, that name and that family name will resonate something else. Yeah, yeah. It will uh, do something bad, and you know, uh, that that's that's the essence of the ego. I believe that you have to work every day with your ego. Like, okay, it's normal. It's normal to be uh, wanting stuff. It's perfectly normal to want to develop. It's perfectly normal to want to get rich. It's perfectly normal to look at that great Ferrari and want to, want to drive one of those one day. It's perfectly normal. 
it's not nothing bad in it it's how you allow your ego to obtain that yeah what you want that actually makes the difference yeah and you know what you will leave for a legacy for yourself and your family afterwards it's not because you, you can get that ferrari even if in in bad ways you know people sell drugs yeah and they drive a ferrari but they are not happy there are not many people that are happy yeah it's it, it is kind of that's that's in this world like what we were also talking the last the, the last time that that um, it's like n- n- when you're like kind of born into the world you are you're like never enough for you're like immediately given like uh false things simplified objects uh, you're living in like you know like in the boxes we alienate ourselves completely and we invent some kind of world that that the real world that we are meant to to live in which is the natural world it seems so foreign to us and 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 it's kind of this uh non non worthy of love non worthy of connection and wanting to have more like uh, you, you mentioned like this politician but it's it's the same in 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 him and in everybody else it's like like uh, this non worthiness that that will take you to the point that you will even poison people put the food poisoning in in the industries and things like that and all the sort of unimaginable thing, <laughs> things that from the the moment now you cannot even imagine because it's like when you just stop in this world now and just say like okay i'm now thinking about like what this world is really about and and when you see what things are being done in this world you were like no it's not possible this is this is going on you know <laughs> like all the the the, the things that, that are happening in the world you will be like no it's not possible but it's really possible <laughs> and all these things i think they 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 ultimately come from this uh non-worthiness so when you're born you're kind of as a child you're like slappy and you're just like covered with all the you know natural things like a little animal you know like you're all covered with with things you're eating and and then the mommy and daddy say or the whoever taking care of you say like oh no stay straight play with this play that don't be foolish don't do this do that now you're a child that's okay now you're an adult now change this and all this stuff and 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 you as your natural being would be like you just want to be who you are and you are the same as everybody else we are stinky if we don't take a bath to in two days we're like fucking shit stink you know and and we we kind of put perfumes on our bodies we clean ourselves and we do the, all the, these things constantly and and, and uh, they're okay you know but we kind of get lost in these things that we're doing and mix them with with reality and and if if we're not enough for this world as we are it seems that we're never going to be enough and that is i think that 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 deep uh, loneliness and not worthiness to be accepted to be true with another to to express because i think the most beauty and most thing that that I, that i felt also connection with with you and and uh, the other day with your friend which we were lucky to to have people like you to talk with uh it was like a bliss to see that that you are not afraid to show your inner being who you really are your fears your happiness your struggle and i think every if everybody would share that uh there would be a much nicer world you know like uh we're not i mean with this talk we're not want to change anything in that sense because we cannot do anything but it's just like one thought out there in this vast uh, uh ocean of whatever it's just like it's so much for me it's so much precious like sharing another's perspective completely on the depth not only like oh this and that and i remember one thing uh, just to to uh, to speed up what i want to say is that i remember one friend that i had that that he just i i'm keep keeping on the same depth you know with him as well about the life and this and that and it was like one day tell me hey man it's like things that you're talking to me nobody is talking to me these things i'm i'm not speaking with anybody these things and i was like okay but what are you doing then and, and he was like no i i have one 
friend for uh, playing so- Sony uh, PlayStation, one friend to go basketball, one friend to go, you know, then I have my girlfriend, I go to cinema, I do this, I do that. So it's kind of fragments of, of this uh, life, I think. That's how I see it. And, and it was really sad for me to, to hear that, you know. All right, so I think it's so interesting that you, you bring up worthiness uh, because it's so connected to your ego. Yeah. Worthiness is like the the twin brother of <laughs> ego, you know, uh, because it's as you say. Early on, we teach our our kids, you know, what's worthy and what's not. You know, if you stay straight, that's worthy. If you hunkle down like this, it's not worthy. Uh, if you have good grades, that's worthy. If your grades are not as good, that's not so worthy. You know, we, we tend to uh, grade everything we do with our kids. And then they keep on grading all of the stuff they do through their life. And, you know, build the ego out of that result, you know. And what's so interesting is what happens when the life takes a turn that you didn't plan to. Like, for example, I got my visual impairment or another person gets into a car accident and all of a sudden, uh, you know, spinal injury and they cannot walk ever again. Uh, What happens then? You know, the the concept of worldliness... uh, like, am I worthy as a person now when I'm someone else? Or when my body is something else than it used to be? You know, how do you concept that? How do you understand mm-hmm. those changes and how will your ego cope with, with that uh, kind of uh you know condition condition yeah. new condition in your life yeah you know because it's not it's it's you know it's a fact that it's the same body but it it will never function as it used to mm-hmm. before yeah so and there was really good thing that worthiness in that you know yeah Exactly, and there was one good thing that you said uh, about this taxi driver that he asked you about the, the vision and things, and and you said it, uh, and I don't know if you can remember exactly the phrasing, but it was really nice as a quote to use, uh, that you said that uh, with his eyes, you know, like, uh, I mean, people who have eyes, but they're blind. <laughs> yeah, I have it in my, uh, in my book, actually. Yeah, can, can you repeat the last, that? As the last sentence... Uh, and it is, you know, uh, I believe that, uh, I strongly believe that it's so much, much worse to be blind in your heart than being blind in your eyes, you know? There is, that is too different of blindness, you know? <laughs> because if you're blind in your eyes, you can still see. But if you're blind in your heart, then, you know, Total darkness. <laughs> That's total darkness. You know, and that is, uh, I believe strongly in that because uh, yes. it's it's a hugely yeah, interesting yeah. Uh, way of seeing life. You know, I see so many, so many. You know, I, I, I many times I get asked, well, how many people are actually blind in Sweden or in Europe or in the world? And I say, well, in Sweden, about eight million. Or, or, or something like that, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's a, it's a small yes. small joke, but actually, you know, so yeah, many, no so many people are blind because they don't see around themselves. They don't see other people. Um, a couple of months ago, I worked late uh, in another city, and I came to Malmo Central Station. And it was about 11.30 in the, in, the, in the evening. And, you know, when I come up from, from the, the track, uh, train tracks downstairs, I usually have, you know, to find my way. So I walk around a little until I find really where I'm going. And all of a sudden, Gibson, he stops. 
and he won't move. And I was like, I'm getting like, what's happening? You know? So I got down to feel like, what is there? So, and there lies a girl about 20 years old or something, you know? She was so drugged that she was almost gone. And she was just like, tell me, please call an ambulance, you know? And there I was sitting there and I was looking around. So many people in the central station. They were just walking past her. Like, hey man, this could be your daughter. This could be your sister. It could be whatever. And everyone is just walking past. And who stops? Yeah. And won't move? An animal. Yeah. An animal that understands, you know, that something is wrong. And I, afterwards, you know, I went home, I called an ambulance, you know, already there. I called an ambulance and the police came and took care of her, her and she's arrived and everything. And when I come, come home, you know, my, my tears starting, you know, dripping. And I was thinking like, these people who, whack, who, who just walked past her, you know, if they would have seen in the newspaper the day after a young girl died in a, of, a, of an overdose in Malmo Central Station yesterday, would they even stop, look at that article and think, my God, yeah. must be that girl I saw yesterday. Why don't people, you know, stop? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand this. You know? yeah. For, yeah. Me it's, for me, it's so beyond, beyond understanding mm. of... And I believe, you know, COVID, I believe that all of this situation, I, I don't think it's just bad. I think it's good. I think actually, you know, it's a reminder mm. of how precious life is. It's a reminder. It's a reminder of, you know, of our values, of our inner selves, of our, uh, you know, uh, inner values. That no matter how much money you have, no matter what car you drive, no matter which area you live in, COVID can kill you. It can kill your relatives. It can kill. Everyone, okay? Young, old, uh, everyone is in danger. Yeah. And all of a sudden, society stops, okay? First, we drive 250 kilometers an hour straight ahead. And then something like this happened, society stops. And now we're thinking about, wow, okay? Imagine how many times you have had and me and have and, and every one of us have had the chance to to uh, hug our spouse, our our parents, our grandparents, tell them that you love them, and you never did. You know, life goes by every day, goes so fast, and you never do. And all of a sudden, something happens, and you are not allowed to. Because if you do, they will die. <laughs> and now you understand the value. My God, what have I been missing out on? You know, and it's the same. Like getting a disability, we take so much for granted every day. Our eyes, our legs, our hands, our you know ability to speak, ability to hear. Yeah, we take friends, and friends. We take everything for granted, and then we lose one thing. And after that, we understand what we had. You know? yeah. And my wish is for people to be able, you know, to stop and keep that ego quiet for for a while, you know, yeah. just for a minute <laughs> and be thankful and actually understand what do I have, you know, right now. Yeah. right now. And what do I need to value and what do I need to take care of, you know, don't forget to send that text message, I love you, to the one you love. Because you can go out in the street, a car, yeah. and or, or the one you were supposed to send that message to, and you think, I'll do it later. <laughs> Get driven by a car. 
it's no matter, no, no use you send that message afterwards.